Hello, and welcome back to our Pharmacy Calculations practice series. Today, we're doing a special episode on flow rates, which comes in to us as a request from one of our Pharmacy Tech Scholar online course students. Now, we have a few notes before we get into the actual practice questions. Now, IV fluid administration rates are typically expressed as units of volume per unit of time. And the units of volume that are typically used are microliters, milliliters, deciliters, or liters, milliliters certainly being the most common of those. The unit of time that are typically used are either minutes or hours. So subsequently, you'll see the drip or flow rate, as another, these are interchangeable terms, expressed as milliliters per minute or milliliters per hour. You could also see liters per hour or any combination of the above, but these two are, are the most common that you're going to see in actual practice. Historically, before the smart infusion pump technology became commonplace, drops was used as a unit of volume. So nurses in patient care units would have to set the IV flow rates based on the number of drops that they counted per unit of time. And the number of drops that was in a milliliter was determined by the type of IV tubing set that was being used. And a common standard for this was 15 drops per milliliter in a standard set or 60 drops per milliliter in a micro drip set. Questions that ask for drops per milliliter answers require an additional step in converting drops to milliliters. Now, I don't believe you're going to see something like this on the pharmacy technician certification exam. It's not impossible, but it's not really practical anymore because smart infusion pumps have become the standard of use in institutions that deliver solutions to patients. But still, you know, maybe you could possibly see one of these questions and it would be good to be familiar with this concept. So we'll start with a simple illustration to explain this concept. We have a couple questions after this that are a little more difficult. But in this example, an order is given to administer one liter of normal saline to a patient intravenously over an hour. What should the flow rate be in milliliters per minute? Now, anytime you see a question, calculation question on the PTCE, you have to pay very close attention to your units that are given to you throughout the question, as well as the units given to you in your answer because you're likely going to have to do some conversions. And in this case, the dose to the patient's being expressed in liters with a time of an hour, but your answer is in milliliters per minute. So the first thing we need to do is convert liters to milliliters and hours to minutes. Now these are very simple conversions, but you need to know all of your metric unit conversions. You need to have that memorized because you're going to need to use that information on the PTCE and you should know that one liter is equivalent to a thousand milliliters. Now this is a very easy conversion because we're only dealing with one liter. Another way you can convert from liters to milliliters is when converting from a liter to milliliters, you simply move your decimal point. We'll just write this out like that. Three spaces to the right and one liter becomes 1000 milliliters. So that's the way you do it if you're dealing with 2 liters or 4 liters, 1.5 liters, uh, however you, know, you want to express it. That's just a simple way to do that conversion. So we know we're dealing with 1,000 milliliters has to be administered to the patient intravenously over an hour. And, you know, obviously, I think everybody watching this will know that one hour is equivalent to 60 minutes. You know, we can write out how to do that in a proportion of cross multiplication, but I don't think we need to do that for this example. But what we will do is now take these converted units and figure out what the flow rate is going to be in milliliters per minute, because it's not milliliters per 60 minutes. So anytime you're doing a solution like this, I always recommend setting up a proportion with your unknown variable in the numerator position on the right. So we're trying to solve for X number of milliliters per one minute or per minute. And on the left hand side, we put what we know. So we know the patient needs to get a thousand milliliters per 60 minutes. And we need to keep
keep our units consistent in the numerator and denominator positions. So milliliters is going to go up top, 1,000 milliliters, and minutes is going to go on the bottom, 60 minutes. So this is a proportion that can be solved by cross multiplication. And to do that, if you watch any of our videos, you'll know this by now, you take 1,000 milliliters divided by 60 minutes, and then you cross multiply by that denominator on the right. So times one minute is going to be equal to, let me just pull out my calculator. So 1,000 divided by 60 times one is going to be 16. Point six 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 etc. So we'll just call that sixteen point seven. And that unit's going to be milliliters per minute because when you do uh, this cross multiplication, you actually very nicely cancel out your units to get um, exactly what you're looking at in that ratio there. So the answer to this question would be sixteen point seven milliliters per minute. There's other ways you could have done this. Um, but this is a very consistent way you can use uh, to solve these questions and reduce your risk for making a mistake. Okay, so we've got another example now that requires another additional step, or a couple additional steps, I should say, to give you a little more practice in multi-conversion calculations, which a lot of the calculation examples you're going to see on the actual PTCE require multiple different steps. So the question is very similar. So you've got a patient that has an order to get 20 milliliters per kilogram of normal saline infused over an hour. This patient weighs 154 pounds. What should the flow rate be in milliliters per minute? So now instead of just giving us the total volume the patient's going to get, we get a weight-based volume. The weight used in the volume is kilograms but our patient weight is given in pounds, so we're going to have to do some conversions there. And ultimately, our answer is going to need to be in milliliters per minute. So the first thing I would do is convert this patient's weight from pounds to kilograms. And this is one really important conversion you're going to need to have memorized for the exam, and that's that one kilogram is equivalent to 2.2 pounds. So definitely commit that to memory. Now, I'll tell you, you know, you could do this conversion by setting up a proportion like I always advocate to do, but a simpler way to convert pounds uh, in kilograms is if you're dealing in pounds, you can convert to kilograms by simply dividing by 2.2, divided by 2.2. So 154 divided by 2.2 is 70 kilograms. Now, we know the dose is 20 milligrams per kilogram. So how many milli, I mean, milliliters per kilogram? So how many milliliters per 70 kilograms? And again, we could do this simply, but just to illustrate you know, a consistent method in setting up proportions, we want to know how many milliliters for a 70 kilogram patient if the dose that we're being given is 20 milliliters per kilogram. And again, I set this up where our unknown is in the numerator on the right, and our left is our known information with the units consistent in the numerator and denominator positions. So 20 milliliters divided by 1 kilogram times 70 kilograms is going to be 1,400 milliliters. Excuse my pathetic M there. Okay, so we know now that the total dose that the patient is going to get is 1,400 milliliters, and that's supposed to be given over an hour, just like our previous example. So what is our flow rate in milliliters per minute? So we can simply solve that by saying how many milliliters per one minute is equivalent to 1,400 milliliters over 60 minutes. Remember, we're giving this over an hour. And again, we can just take 1,400 divided by 60 times 1. 
is going to be 23.3 milliliters per minute. So this would be our answer for this particular question. Okay, so we're going to do one last variation of this question. And this time we're going to use drops per minute just to change it up. So you get an order to give one liter of normal saline to a patient intravenously over an hour. What should the flow rate be in drops per minute using a standard IV infusion tubing set? Now, I don't mean to scare you with this question. I really don't think you need to memorize the drops per minute part, but we're just going to do this for illustration. So if we assume that there's 15 drops per one ml, that's a typical standard IV infusion tubing set historically. This is what we're going to need uh, to use as we do some of our conversions, as we're converting from milliliters or liters to drops. So we know the total dose is one liter of normal saline has to be given in over an hour, just like we've done in our prior examples. And we need a flow rate in drops per minute. Okay, so we need to get from one liter of normal saline over an hour to number of drops per minute. Again, the first step I would do is just convert that one liter to 1000 milliliters. We already know that. We know we're doing this over an hour, so we're gonna be deal dealing with 60 minutes here and we need to get the drops per minute. So I'll set up a proportion to figure out how many drops are in a thousand milliliters. If we make the assumption that there's 15 drops per one milliliter. Okay, so this would be one place to start. We could start elsewhere, but I think this will be a simple way to solve this. So 15 divided by 1 times 1,000. So x equals 15,000 drops. So our total dose is going to be 15,000 drops. That's given over an hour. So we need to know how many is going to be given per minute because that's our final unit. So we can now set up another proportion to figure out how many drops we're going to give per minute if we're going to be giving a total of 15,000 drops per 60 minutes. So that 15,000 divided by 60 times 1, x equals 250 drops per minute. So this would be our answer. Um, obviously, you could convert that to drops per second or drops per 10 seconds or whatever. Um, but this would be the answer this question is specifically asking for. So those are just a few examples of flow rate or drip rate calculations. I can certainly do more if anybody wants to see some more examples. If you have questions about any other types of calculations, feel free to reach out to us on our Facebook page listed here via email, or directly on our website at pharmacytechscholar.com. Thanks for watching.